The 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. I'm Elena Ross. Matthew Queen, the man charged with killing Michael Holsenbake, a member of the Bakersfield Three, took the witness stand yesterday in his own defense. But this morning, court did not reconvene as expected. 17's Maddie Jansen has been following this case from the beginning and joins us now in studio with the latest. Maddie. Hey, hey, hey Elena. The trial was delayed this morning as a juror who was hurt in an accident was replaced with an alternate. But when jurors and audience members were brought in, Judge Charles Bremer said he had things to discuss with the attorneys and court would reconvene tomorrow at 9 a.m. Yesterday, Matthew Queen took the stand in his own defense. He faces 35 charges total, including the murder and torture of Mike, Micah Holsenbake. Queen began by saying he was testifying because it was time for the truth to come out. He talked about his job as an electrician and living at his home in Northwest Bakersfield with his three children, his mother and his ex-wife. He said he only started making guns as a way to bond with his son. Queen addressed when he first started hanging out with the group that included Caleb Seiler, who testified earlier, Holson Bake and Bailey Despont, who became his girlfriend. He says that's when he relapsed and started using meth again. Queen said one night in March 2018, Holson Bake came over to his house, and when Queen made a joke, Holson Bake pulled out a gun. Queen said Holson Bake was known for acting erratically at the time. He says Despont walked into the garage and Holson Bake pointed the gun at her. That's when Queen tackled him. As he tried to restrain Holsenbake, the alleged killer says Despot dropped a 40-pound dumbbell on Holsenbake's head, killing him. Queen, his voice wavering, said his biggest fear was his four-year-old child walking in and seeing a dead man in his garage. He says it was at this point that Despot devised the plan to take Holsenbake's body to Matthew Van de Castile's garage to dismember and dispose of him. Holsenbake's arm and later skull were found in the Kern River. Despot has been missing ever since. You can read much more about yesterday's testimony on our website, KGET.com. Elena. And now to your 17 Crime Watch. 20 people have been arrested and five victims recovered in a multi-agency investigation of human trafficking and child exploitation here in Bakersfield. Kern County District Attorney Cynthia Zimmer says between April 20th and 23rd, three people were arrested for trying to contact juveniles for lewd purposes through social media and dating apps. One of those arrested was a lieutenant with the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Jose Donaciano Val Valdez allegedly tried to meet with a 13-year-old girl at a hotel, but the girl turned out to be an undercover officer. CDCR told 17 News that Valdez has been placed on administrative leave. Kern County District Attorney Cynthia Zimmer stopped by Sunrise this morning to talk about her department's crackdown on human trafficking. Well, human trafficking is the fastest growing crime in the world and we have stepped up our efforts in order to arrest and prosecute human traffickers. Uh, we are getting very aggressive about it. We formed a task force in January and this is just one of our operations. We're very proud of the results. All right, so let's check out the latest COVID-19 case numbers here in Kern County. This morning, Kern County Public Health updated our local dashboard to show 139 new positive cases and four new deaths attributed to the virus. State data shows 18 people are hospitalized here locally with COVID and four patients are listed in intensive care units. Well, now to some local education news. We are learning the names of the Kern County students who won big at the California Science and Engineering Fair, which was held virtually earlier this month. Five local students made the list in their categories, including Hargis O'Brar, the Stockdale student who has qualified for the Regeneron International Science and Engineering Fair. He will be competing at that international fair in early May, along with another Stockdale student, Alor Sahu. Congratulations to all of the local winners at the state fair. And after a three-year hiatus, students from the Bakersfield City School District performed last night during the 64th annual Junior High Middle School Honor Concert at Mechanics Bank Theater. Well, the free event featured the best young musicians in the district's Junior High Middle School Honor Band, Honor Choir, and the Honor Orchestras. Last night's finale performance included more than 400 student musicians performing God Bless America. The district's music program recently received national recognition as one of the best communities for music education by the National Association of Music Merchants for the 10th consecutive year.
It's fantastic there. All right, happening today, it is a big kickoff for Give Big Kern. The Kern Community Foundation and local nonprofits are hosting their Give Big Kern kickoff mixer tonight at the Padre Hotel at 5 p.m. This is video of a previous event. Now, Give Big Kern is an all-day virtual fundraiser set for Tuesday, May 3rd, but donors can pledge volunteer hours and monetary donations to their favorite nonprofits online right now. This collaborative fundraising effort helps Kern's community-based organizations raise resources while also growing their visibility, capacity, and sustainability. Tonight's mixer is free and open to the public. Hello, this is Tim Callahan with Clinica Sierra Vista, and we're excited to unveil the Community Health Center of the Future, our comprehensive care center. It's located right across the street from Memorial Hospital. We have every service under one roof, from family medicine, OBGYN care, dental services for adults and children, behavioral health, and much more. So find your way to better care at Clinica Sierra Vista this year at our comprehensive care center. Visit our website, clinicasierravista.org, for the latest on this project. We'll see you soon. Well, now to our Water Watchers file. The California Department of Water Resources is working on a long-term plan to help find solutions to the state's drought. This is through helicopter-based technology that uses aerial images to assess groundwater resources. The Department of Water Resources Director Carla Nemeth highlighted the state's plan yesterday, detailing how that data will be used. The kind of information that um, this technology is demonstrating is going to be crucial for all of our local groundwater management agencies to identify um, where to add facilities, to identify when we get the big rain events, where to put that water so that we can then draw on it during the future drought. State officials say California has invested more than $5 billion over three years to support drought response and build water resilience across the state. Meanwhile, state leaders are introducing new legislation that aims to fight air pollution in disadvantaged communities across California. The bill, known as AB 2910, would increase maximum penalties statewide for facilities that violate air pollution rules. About how it impacts you. From the, pain in your, from the pain in your head, to your sinuses, to the way that kids cough, the way they get sick. And right down the street, we have five rendering plants. Five rendering plants. And they're heavy violators, most of them. Now, we've had Excite, we're landlocked between freeways, and, this, and now we have five rendering plants that continue to get fined and just don't uphold the law. We just want them to simply clean up their mess. Now, the daily fines would go from 5,000 to 30,000 for minor violations, all the way up to $45,000 a day. Officials say the increased penalties would deter repeat offenders who don't seem phased by the current fines. Well, in business news, the Bakersfield Women's Business Conference is back in person after being canceled for the pandemic in 2020 and going virtual in 2021. There will be two keynote speakers this year, professional snowboarder and three-time Paralympic medalist Amy Purdy and Broadway actor Brian Terrell Clark. He is one of the longest running actors to play George Washington in Hamilton on Broadway. He'll be addressing the theme of the conference this year, which is embrace all that is you. He says he wants to help local entrepreneurs realize what their authenticity, what makes them unique, and how it can be their superpower in business. Clark calls it the Hamilton effect and likens it to how writer Lin-Manuel Miranda created the stage sensation that revolutionized Broadway. He, he brings his culture, he brings his love of hip hop, he brings his love of history to the Broadway space. And that's not something that's usually in alignment with each other. <laughs> um, and so by him allowing himself to be that transparent um, and then enjoying bringing his authenticity to his work, you get products like Hamilton. Now, besides appearing on Broadway, Clark has acted in When They See Us and Inventing Anna on Netflix and Warner Brothers Snowpiercer in 2020, just to name a few. The 33rd Annual Bakersfield Women's Business Conference is happening this Thursday at the Mechanics Bank Convention Center, and you can get tickets at bakersfieldwomen.org. All right, despite inflation, the National Retail Federation says consumers will shell out and in record amounts for Mother's Day. Total spending could reach about $31.7 billion for gifts. That's up $3.6 billion over 2021. The average consumer will spend about $246 on mom, with items like jewelry and special outings boosting the spending. And they say the average Mother's Day brunch or dinner for mom will cost about 41 bucks. 
And the shops at the Riverwalk will soon welcome a new name. Nectar Juice Bar is opening a storefront there on Stockdale Highway between Yard House and Eureka. According to a sign, they are hiring and opening soon. Their website advertises handcrafted juices, smoothies, and acai bowls that are natural, clean, and always buzzing with the most energizing and nutrient-rich ingredients. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.